and we're back with another stream. What's up, Simonix, and welcome back to Stream Thursday. This sounds horrible. Like we got Tutorial Tuesday. We come definitely need something for this stream. I should probably mute myself when I look at my own stream. So welcome to already six people waiting in line. Actually, you shouldn't be waiting. You should hopefully be already in the stream. I hope you're having a great week so far. Uh, welcome Hani Abdul Khalil. Oh, this is hard, but I hope I said this right. Um, get your friends on board because we're talking about Swell today. Definitely gonna show uh spread some love on twitter quickly so we can gather uh actually i did this my own building apps with swelt directly to twitch mm, actually would like to get a link to youtube instead that make more sense come join the live stream about swelt and Ionic framework, because this is really what's going to happen. We are gonna use Svelte and Ionic in this stream. Uh, Chuck, welcome back. Good morning to Tampa Bay. Good morning, Matthias. It's cool to see the same people every Tuesday tuning in. If we could just get like this one time, we had close to 80 people, I think 79 when I revealed Ionic blocks. I don't know exactly why we had so many people in that stream. It wasn't like the title was anything specific or like it was a, yeah, it was kind of launch stream. Um, but let's hope some more people join in today because it's gonna be really, really interesting. Um, make sure your friends are all in the stream as well, your colleagues. Take an hour off because I'm not doing any really long time streams. I know. The cool kids these days, as Simon said last week, like they're gonna tune in for five hours into a stream, but I feel like a lot of other developers won't have that much time. <laughs> so uh, unless you're a teen and watch this on the couch, you probably don't have five hours to to watch me code anything with Ionic and Svelte. Good morning, Martin. Why do you have a check mark? Are you some kind of special person here in the Simonix community? I definitely want to add like memberships so you can have something special in the chat with a cool emote or something. But yeah, that's for the future. 16 people already. If we get to 20, no, let's not do this. <laughs> uh, otherwise we would sit here like waiting for 30 minutes. So I hope you already had a good week. Uh, in Germany, this week was pretty hot. Well, yesterday or I think Tuesday, we were close to 40 degrees, which is pretty very hot. Like if we get 30, that's a nice summer day. But if we get 40, that's not a nice summer day anymore. I don't know if it's the same like in, in Tampa Bay for Chuck, uh, but 40 degrees is, is way too much. That you pretty much, you can't just, you could just stay indoor and like drink enough and chill and do nothing. So we spent the morning at the, uh, do you say Lido or open air, like open air swimming pool sounds so horrible. In Germany, it's Freibad, it's like free bath. But open air swimming pool, this sounds so complicated, like people in other countries are not even using this. Uh, anyway, hey Ray, good uh, good after, good night to Australia. I think you're six, seven, eight hours ahead. So uh, yeah, it is, it is, it was definitely very hard. Oh, Marcos directly diving into the questions, is Swelt better than other front end frameworks? Hmm? We're gonna find out today. We're gonna find out. Let's do this because super excited. Exactly. So let's dive into this. Um, we gonna do a bunch of things with Swelt. And before we do this, I would just want to quickly point out that Tom or Tom um, did an amazing job of creating something because it's actually not that easy to use Swelt and Ionic together. Uh, so there's a bit of additional work involved, and we're gonna not use or in the beginning, not use the stuff directly here because I wanna show you how you can go step by step from actually starting a Svelte project to a bit of Svelte usage and then transitioning into using Ionic and Capacitor so you really understand um, what we're doing. If you wanted to use something, you can actually use different uh, starters. There's a blank demo, a tabs demo, site menu, uh, including capacitor, list, and sort of a conference demo. There are still some things that are not really working very well with uh, Svelte and capacitor. 
uh, but we're gonna get to all of this. So once again, shout out to Tom or Tom who did an amazing job. You can also check out the hosted version where uh, he's showing off everything that's possible with the uh, components. So all of this, what you see here is using Svelte. Now, I think we should probably take a step back and get started with Svelte in general. So Svelte is somewhat like Angular and React. It's a JavaScript framework, but I was always kind of scared to use it because um, like this cybernetically enhanced web apps, this sound like very, I don't know, to me like very strange. So uh, I didn't use it for a long time, but I felt like many people, many experts in the industry are moving to Svelte and considering it a very great framework. And that's when I gave it a try. And I must admit, it's actually really pretty cool. So the big difference is, well, the first difference is that, uh, especially if you're coming from Angular, it's a thing, uh, no, a single file, a single file <laughs> approach. So you have all HTML, CSS, and JavaScript in one Svelte file underneath each other. You might know this from Vue. You might like this. You might not like it. Um, but well, that's just how it works. But the cool thing is that there's actually no virtual DOM. So uh, no virtual DOM like with React or no zone with Angular. Everything Swelter does is it actually compiles our code um, to vanilla JavaScript that's then shipped to people. And that makes it like a completely different approach. Here we can already see like a little glimpse at what Svelte is, um, like how it looks. We got a script up here with a bit of JS and then we got some HTML. The cool thing as well is that all CSS is scoped. So if we write some specific styling, once again, we got style, we got HTML and we got JavaScript in one file. This is scoped to this speci specific file. Like what's my problem today with the S? Um, in terms of reactivity, binding to click events or handling any kind of actions is pretty straightforward. We all know from like Angular, React, that there is a certain syntax that you just need to pick up. And this is how it looks with um, Svelte. On top of that the function, this is pretty much just JavaScript. If you know JavaScript and TypeScript, you're gonna have an easy type. Um, well, we don't really need to get into transitions, but here we can already see like how an if statement works. Everything looks a bit different. Here's an ng4 or like a for loop with an it each. Um, so it is actually not that hard to learn, I think, as an Angular developer. The hardest part is probably figuring out like what to do. And I found this uh, also uh, problematic with React, like which frameworks do you use? Which packages do you need? Which routing? Um, and for Svelte, there's another very cool thing called Svelte Kit. This is actually, oh nice, this is the Svelte Kit block startup, pretty cool. Um, Svelte Kit is, come on, there we go. Svelte Kit is pretty much to Svelte what Next.js is to React. So it's a framework that gives you a bit more structure. It is also routing based on files, which I really enjoyed about using Next.js. Um, it has server-side rendering, and I'm actually building my future block based on SwelteKit. At least that's the current plan. However, at the point, giving it a try right now, it didn't really work for Ionic um, framework UI. The problem is just with SwelteKit and the hydration of server components. There are big issues, and just today, like 13 hours ago, there was a comment from Rich Harris, who's like the creator of Svelte, uh, who actually talked about this, like here was the issue when using Ionic from CDN, Svelte Kit doesn't work with Ionic while Svelte works. Yes, we can use it with Svelte, but not with Svelte Kit. And he pointed out that it's actually a problem of Ionic. Um, so during hydration is to ensure that the DOM at the end row matches the authored components. When custom elements start fudging around with a markup willy nilly, all bets are off. This is a bug in Ionic. Their elements are incompatible with frameworks that use hydration. I can't judge this exactly because I'm not uh, that deep into hydration and these kind of topics, um, but I will definitely uh, ping the Ionic team about this comment, which just dropped 14 hours ago. 
But anyway, like SwelteKit is to get better SS uh, or server side rendering and better SEO. Like if you build a web page, it's blazing fast and has great SEO. However, if we want to build a native mobile application with Ionic, we don't really need to consider SSR or SEO. So therefore, today we're going to focus on just Swelt. And to get started, I'm going to actually create a blank <laughs> application like I needed to bring this really um, but I can't even zoom in in like I need to zoom in like a thousand times to make this visible to you I guess oh man is there like a shortcut and I also need to go back <laughs> later what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a new application using Vite. Vite is like uh, yeah uh, welcome to front-end hell this is what I described in our recent podcast um, yeah it's uh I think is it a bundling tool? What's white? How do you how do you put this in uh like one line? White oh come on. White next generation front end tooling. Well it actually sounds pretty cool, right? If you put it like that. <laughs> so it is really it is lightning fast. Um you don't have to worry about it too much at this point. Just go ahead and run npm create white uh at latest and uh, we're gonna also give it a project name. So let's call this my app. So it's not asking for that package name yet, whatever. Then we're gonna select a framework, uh, vanilla, view, react, preact, lit elements, or Swelt. Today we're going with Swelt, and of course we're going with Swelt TypeScript. So nice, we got my app set up, so let's dive into this. And in the background I can now zoom out 5,000 times to make my console look like a normal console again. Okay, cool. Also, my window was resized, so we're gonna figure this out. Just the usual streaming issues, right? Okay, uh -huh -huh. we're gonna zoom in a bunch of times here as well, and then I'm gonna check, oh, 21 watching. That's okay, okay. Um. So to answer Marcus, is Swelt better than other framework front-end libraries? Well, that's not that easy to answer. It's different. It's different. Um, as I said, like with Angular, with React, you have the virtual DOM, and with Swelt, you're just chipping the vanilla JavaScript, which in itself should be really, really fast. And also, the tooling around Swelt felt really good with Vite. Um, Everything felt pretty fast, so I highly enjoyed the development and I also, um, well, enjoyed the speed of the final, the finished application. So it's not better, but I think it's definitely great and I think more and more people are coming to Swelt. Uh, okay, quick round of interaction. Hey, Keda, good morning, good morning, Alex to France, oh, bonjour. Yeah, Matthias, um, cybernetically, I thought, I thought like this is some kind of scientific tool, or whatever, or you need to understand AI or something like probably they should work, uh, rework their line with cybernetically enhanced. Welcome, David. Uh, Ray, now you can understand how big I have to make my screen. <laughs> yeah, I do. I do. Okay. Um, we're in our project, let's run npm install to install the dependencies and then we're ready to actually run npm run dev. This should already run Vite and bring up our application at the, the most strangest of all ports that I've ever seen in a live real <laughs> Like, What is this? 5173, like why? Why on earth 5173? <laughs> Uh, anyway, uh, Swelt, is, Swelt is fun. It makes a great fit because Ionic is fun as well. Uh, so what are we going to put the preview? Uh, we're going to put it here. Uh, you cool with that? Uh, then we're going to make it like a long preview. Uh, whatever. should probably make this. And I'm going to have this. Maybe I should at some point make the chat a bit smaller. But for now, I think this should work pretty nicely for you. Unless, yeah, like YouTube. Could you please just show me the chat correctly? Otherwise, I actually don't know what we're, what you're saying. Uh, there we go. Yeah, it's the default. Vi it's the new default Vite three port since three thousand caused trouble. I understand that. Like, yeah, three three uh, K is probably taken by a lot of applications. Ionic is using eight one zero zero. 
Uh, next is using four. I don't know, like everyone's using a different port. I could probably just change this in the uh, package JSON. So for white dev, I could, uh, or is it actually called Veet? I, I, yeah, Veet for quick pronounced Veet. Yeah, thanks Domenico. Uh, thanks for correcting this in the beginning. It's called Veet, not Veit. Uh, it's French for quick. Thanks very much um, for saving me time in the beginning. So let's see if I can do like port whatever, 5K. Yeah, that works nice as well. <laughs> and then it's it's here. Doesn't matter too much, but I kind of like that port more. Okay, this is our white, uh, our Vite, uh, and actually our Swelt application. Let's see how a Swelt application works in the beginning. We start with an index HTML where we got the body, which looks pretty much like any other uh, front end framework, Angular, React. Then we got our main TS, which is the entry point, which loads the app from app.swelt and creates a new app. <laughs> I'm always fascinated, like this reminds me so much of jQuery. Whenever I see this, I think it's the same in React applications, but this is also somewhere. <laughs> like what could possibly go wrong? Let's just use this line. Okay, um, so that means we're pretty much rendering the app inside our uh, app tag in the index, which was here. So let's check out the app swelled. We got at the top a script block, which is just, is this actually big enough? Should I zoom in more? Like this is probably even friendlier for your eyes. Um, this is our TypeScript block up here because we say language TypeScript. We could actually remove this and it would just be JavaScript. Then without any other opening text, we got HTML. And once we open a style tag, we can write CSS. So this is our whole file. If I had done this with Angular, you know, we would have like a module file, a routing file, CSS file, a testing file, HTML file, the actual TS file, <laughs> five or six different files. Feels like using Java in 10 years ago uh, with the great patterns. But anyway, um, let's see, I'm going to get rid of a bunch of things here. Actually, I'm going to keep a bit of this, um, but I want to make this easier for you to see what's actually going on. So white dots, uh, Vite and Svelte. Here we can see a cool component importer. Um, this works pretty easy. So inside our lip, we have this counter, which is once again, just the same thing. And I could now put in Simon was here. And we're gonna see the reload is really, really fast. And this is, this is just, it makes it so easy. There's nothing we need to do to create a component, like just create a file, import that file here and put it in here. And we could even uh, put some like properties onto the counter. Like if we wanna have, uh, for example, let's say we wanna have an initial value I could probably say export let count. So if I put an export in front of the, the, the let here, I should be able to actually yeah, set this right here to let's say 42. So it begins right with 42. Uh, type string is not as high and we even get TypeScript complaining about stuff. So this is really what I like the a few of the core things that I really, really like about Svelte. And you see how fast it is with the Vite config. I'm just happy I didn't create any other videos using Svelte before, Domenico. Like, I did a video on asynchronous JavaScript where I repeatedly said like, what did I say? Asynchronous? Something like this. It was like horrible watching it now uh, until someone pointed out that it's usually pronounced asynchronous. But that's just happen if you're not a native speaker. Anyway, um, so count is 42. Um, so that means I could pass it in more like this. Pretty, pretty cool. Um, what we don't have uh, out of the box with Svelte is, um, yeah, less boilerplate code, 100%. And what we also don't have is routing. So we could use, um, pretty much any routing that we want. There are different packages like uh, SPA router, um, Svelte routing, 
uh, but I found the Routify package to be actually pretty cool. So Routify beta 3, this is what we want to use. So I'm going to install this now in our application. This pretty much brings in um, what we already get with Swelt Kit. So I can, can, hello terminal, can you please do this cool? This is not how I want it. What's your problem? npm install minus d for development dependency at roxy uh, routify at next. So that's what I want to install. To get this uh, up and running, we need a bit of configuration. Um, especially we need to define where this can find our routes. Uh, so therefore we should put a little block into our vt config <laughs> uh, right here uh, for the plugins we're gonna add routify i don't i don't actually know if we need anything else like probably this already works let's see uh you want something in there you really um actually don't know you want ssr or something uh what's your problem Mm -mm -mm. Mm -mm -mm. I actually think you should work without anything else. Um, so let's see. But what we certainly uh, need is... Uh, um, so let's see. Let's just hit save and see what's going on when I run npm run diff usually best uh, uh, no such file or directory source routes okay we can definitely fix this so let's do a new folder routes and in routes I'm gonna put a new file index.swelt index oh no we're gonna make this an h1 it's very important my index okay what do you say about this Cool, you're running again, that's great. We still see the same page before, simply because our app Swelt isn't rendering the actual router. So to fix this, we need to move into our app Swelt and get rid of the things we got in here. Also, um, I'm gonna remove the lib folder right now. Uh, actually, we don't need this stuff anymore. And instead, we're gonna add the router uh, with this syntax. We can also directly close it in here. And then we just need to import the router from Routify. Cool, and we see my index, that's cool. Now, how does this work? Um, it's actually referencing this Routify folder right here, uh, which created routes automatically in the background based on the files in here. So that's why I said it's pretty much like SwelteKit. SwelteKit also has a routes folder or Next.js. Um, this is like the new standard and I pretty much enjoy this. Um, like it makes things a lot easier. If you can just specify your routes in the routes folder, uh, you can have a hierarchy, you can have folders, you can have uh, default layouts for different pages. This makes structuring your application so, so easy and I really like it. So now we got this index file. Uh, let's also create a details.swelt and let's see how we can get to my details. Um, I think we should actually be able to directly go there. Yeah, exactly. I don't know why we see this in the center. Ah, most likely because we got a lot of CSS going on here. Uh, do we wanna keep this? Well, why not? Looks pretty good. Um, do you get any questions so far about Svelte? I don't wanna rush this too much, um, but we're <laughs> almost half an hour into the stream and haven't even touched Ionic. It feels kinda good. Feels good to talk about Swelled. Do you want to see more Swelled? Mm. And also, I still haven't received any coffee package from a subscriber or person of the live stream. Like, I said you should send me some cool coffee from where you live. I really need to test more great coffee. Because, yeah, the coffee, the local coffee here is okay, but... Traditionally, Germany and, and the west of Germany isn't popular for good coffee. Like, yeah, we can probably import a lot of coffee, but uh, yeah, we're not really good at creating that. Uh, 
Also, is there like anyone active on Twitch? I really never know. Um, not a lot, not a lot. Uh, okay. So, yeah. Geil, Alter. Ha, ha, ha. Nice. <laughs> that name, though. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, where did we stop? Okay, we stopped at the routing and it's getting so, so hot. It's actually just 21 degrees today here in Germany, but I don't know. The weather is like, ooh. Anyway, okay, uh, we got the router. Let's see how we can move into different pages. So, um, actually, I'm, I'm, I'm actually not sure. <laughs> uh, most likely we could use something like this, right? We could go now to the details, go to details, and that should uh most likely work this is not the page that i want to see this is also what is going on <laughs> okay go to details yeah that definitely works and what am i hearing uh, okay this was in the in the song we're listening to you <laughs> yeah australia is better known for beer not coffee that's very true very true <laughs> Ray. um so this could work, uh, or we could also have like a button and on click, we would call a function like um, go home and then we could actually go home. I feel like I forgot a bracket somewhere. Yeah, do we actually need this? No, uh, there we go, go home. This will now of course look terrible, but we can easily add our script language TypeScript up here and then say uh, we can probably close the script thanks for not doing this uh, what are you talking about like what is this <laughs> cons go home we can now import go to from routify actually i need to append a dollar i don't know why it's not doing this automatically and then we can go back to this and this is our whole function so we can go to details and we can go back home all right this was just a quick example to show you how routing in our swelled application can work because out of the box out of the box you really want to format this like yeah just do prettier like yes prettier huh i don't know i had some some problem with my script text i guess <laughs> i don't know why uh come on Anyway, uh, what we now want to do is integrate Ionic and that becomes a lot harder. So we're going to start this process by installing Ionic Core and Set. And we added, um, we added Routify because we also still need routing. We could also have done Ionic first and then routing, but I thought routing is more natural to Svelte. Um, so I did this up front and this is definitely, can we, can we this bit um, please. Um, pl uh, not that loud. Also, can we go like a next track? I don't I really don't like the track where the person is talking. <laughs> All right, 25 people. Yes, that's going in the right direction. I like this. Get your friends in here. We need more. And also, of course, make sure you subscribe for uh, future videos. So after installing Ionic Core, we need to do a few things things. Um, what we need to do is first of all import something and that is a big folder that I found in the repository from Toma Tom. So he created um, a very cool folder that I'm just going to bring over to our application now. Thanks for following. Um, this is not exactly how I wanted it to be. I really want to have like the full thing in here okay now get now we're talking so he created this uh structure of lib ionic swelt and with an index file there's a lot now going on in this um i recommend you don't worry too much about it at this point what's going on is that he imports uh all the components which we can see here in the defined components and calls the define component function which 
pretty much uh, uses the custom elements and defines them. So a bit of under the hood things going on. Why did, do we need to do this? Well, because there's no Ionic Swelt package yet. I still hope that we see this in the future. Probably uh, Tom, Tom can help work on this. I also saw a conversation about this with Max Lynch on Twitter. So I'm really looking forward to this. Um, um, but for now, this is what we can use. Still, if we bring in this folder, the rest of the integration becomes actually pretty easy. Um, also, the ion back button doesn't really work well so far as far as I know. Um, so there's a bit of work uh, necessary. Now, let's see. Um, we're currently not serving this, no problem. Uh, let's bring up the live reload again. So far, it's still like this. Um, now, what we want to do is we want to first of all go to our Vite config and add a resolve block. So this resolve block will make life a lot easier uh, using resolve from path because uh, we don't want to reference everything under lib ionic swelled components. And Vite makes it pretty easy to define this as dollar components, dollar services. Um, so just like we can see in here. So that means later in our code, we can just import from dollar ionic and we're directly in this folder. Um, to also make TypeScript happy, uh, we're gonna go to our TS config as well and include a little path block in here, which now looks like this. Pretty much the same setup. This is just to make our IDE happy. And once we get this, we can also finally bring over the theme folder, which is just the variables that were uh, already used to from Ionic. So, oh no, this was the, no. Oh no, what is this key? <laughs> what did I just do? <laughs> oh, I think I just, I should really disable that key. That was like command H. <laughs> A horrible key. So inside the theme, we got the variables which you're uh, used to from Ionic, just the standard setup of variables. Now that we got everything in place, uh, this is still working. I'm happy <laughs> this still works. We need to go to our main TS because now the most important part comes because we're gonna import, do you get the pass right? Yeah, nice. Because we set up the path, actually, Actually, it's not the right path. Can we, uh, I wanna do this from a different path. Mm, ah, not better. <laughs> what I wanted to see is I wanted to have it from dollar ionic swelled because that was the whole point of setting all, up all this fun in the white config and in our uh, TS config. So now we can import setup ions. It's pretty much like the, uh, there's some kind of step we did call in the React application. So now we just need to call setup ionic swelled here in the beginning, and then we're fine. I'm also now gonna finally remove our app CSS because that's really uh, not helpful anymore. And if we're lucky, we should be able to actually add some ionic blocks. So let's see. Um, yeah, why should you use my snippets? Let's see, ion header, ion toolbar color primary, and then ion title, Simon's Swelled app. Let's hope this works. Oh, we're in the details page. Ta da da da! We got an Ionic component in our Swelled application. I like this. Ion card. Ion card content, my cool card. This is so, so cool. Uh, does this work for an ion button with an href? Let's see, expand full, uh, go to details. We're gonna add this here. We're gonna try and add the href to the button. I don't know if this works. It just works, oh my God. <laughs> this is so cool. Like, I don't know if you understand how how cool this actually is. This empowers us to actually build Ionic applications with Swelt. So if you like Swelt, 
you can just get started with this. And you see in the process, it wasn't too hard. Um, like, yeah, we had to go through a few steps. Um, so we had to import this, this lib folder, which hopefully in the future works with just Ionic. Uh, so with an Ionic Swelt wrapper, then we added the theme. Um, what did we do as well? We updated our TS config and the Vite config. We changed this to include the initial call, which initializes the, the whole define ion compound and stuff. Um, and then we were as pretty much ready to use it like this. So let's try and see if we can also make our details page work. Um, I'm gonna add an ion header, my details card, or maybe we use, um, what's another cool component like an ion item? Um, my details item. Can I do like something cool? Yeah, of course I can do something cool, but Simon's um, Swelt Details app. And then we're gonna do, I think the ion back button doesn't work yet, but we're gonna try ion buttons, slot, start, and then an ion back button. Let's see, let's see. Maybe it works. Um, go. Oh, I'm really excited that it works like this. Go to details. Um, yeah, we should probably get rid of this stuff here. Okay. Okay, we don't have a back button. So as I said, I think this is still an issue. And there's also an issue with the UI. Oh no, we got 32 people. I'm really happy, like 30 people watching me. If I had to give an some kind of presentation in school or university and there were like 10 people, I would have said, no, I don't want to do it someone else. And now they're like 35 people watching. And I'm really happy uh, that all of you are here. Don't forget to subscribe so you get notified about the upcoming videos. There's a lot going on right now on this channel. Now, what we got here, um, we got this. I'm not exactly sure why we don't have the ion back button. So we could probably have, yeah, this would most likely work. Um, I think the back button just doesn't work. Also, in terms of the UI, uh, don't think this will work. We can probably check out like a list demo here uh, from Tom or Tom. So let's view the code. Uh, let's see, maybe he has like a details page. Uh, okay, he's also importing go to uh, 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 ion header, ion toolbar, ion buttons, slot start, on click, go to home. Okay, interesting, yeah. So he's doing it like this. I wonder why he's not even having an ion button inside because usually you will have this, but we can live with this. But what he's doing is he also has an ion icon. We definitely want ion icons as well. Like, how do we get ion icons? Uh, let's try. Let's try to import. Maybe we already installed them. I actually don't know if we did. Um, I actually think if you install Ionic Core, we might already have this. Uh, please let us have. Yes, I think. <laughs> nice, we have it. <sighs> Um, so there's definitely the animation missing, um, both for going forward and back. Actually going forward feels horrible, like a complete reload. I think I'm most likely doing something wrong here. Um, probably if I do it, I should define it like this without an href and then just go to details. And then of course also import go to up here script language typescript uh, now you like it right interesting that should be, uh, well and i should probably save yep now it's using the actual router before we were making a whole reload and now we're using more of a, a spa routing um <laughs> 32 people around the world you're the leader of the free ionic world yeah i'm Captain Ionic, uh, but I'm also gonna be like Captain Cross-Platform in the future. Still looking for a decent name for the Academy 2.0. If you got any ideas, 
for a great name for like a cross-platform school sort of thing, which is not only tied to Ionic. Let me know. I'm, maybe I'm going to give out a bounty or something to find a good name. Hey, Kelvin. And no problem for being late. I know, Kelvin, you're the big fan. <laughs> Thanks. And Tony Ross, you're late. No problem on that. Hi, Max. <laughs> oh, we got... Oh, no, I need to be careful what I say. Max Lynch is in here. If I if I see that icon right, I don't know. Hey, Muhammad, welcome back. Um, yeah, if Max is still watching, I don't know if he is. Uh, I just want to quickly bring this up again. Um, we should really get uh, Max into this. Uh, I'm going to put this link in the chat. So if Max is still present, he might be able to check this out and give his thoughts on this. Um, because Reteris Creator of Swelt pretty much blamed Ionic uh, here. Uh, that Ionic is not able to use hydration and that Ionic made a mistake with their components. So if Max is still listening, you might want to check this comment out, which is pretty fresh 15 hours ago when I put the link in the chat. However, I think we've done a great job so far uh, with a bunch of things. Um, Loic, yes, you can also ask a question <laughs> which has no relation to uh, Swelt. Just put it into the chat. I'm going to go through a bunch of questions once we make a little break. But I wanted to do a bit more because so far we've seen, yes, Swelt, we can to some degree import Ionic components. We even got access to... Um, we got styling. Um, uh, let me try this. We got theming. Yes, we got theming in place. We got ionic cons in place. So that leaves us only to one last challenge. And you know which challenge this is. Simonics. What's the challenge? As always, we're going to add capacitor because capacitor is just dope. We love capacitor in here. Everyone loves capacitor. So we're going to install capacitor as development dependencies so we can use the CLI. Uh, 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 I'm going to make this a bit bigger. There we go. Uh, capacitor core, capacitor iOS and Android. And I directly also install the capacitor camera. Um, we might want to use the uh, progressive web app elements. Um, so we can install them as well, I think. Um, but there's a problem with the progressive web app elements as well. So as far as I know, we also need to reference them uh, right now in our index uh, HTML. So I'm going to go ahead with this. Uh, um, no, this is what we want. So I think we don't really have to install it. It will work at some future point. But right now, uh, we're just going to directly add the import to the Ionic PWA elements to our index HTML. And with that in place, I think we should be able to go to our, uh, I don't know, actually, let's go to the index page. And let's do another function. And I'll bring this in because this function is like all the time the same. What we want to do is we want to take a picture using the capacitor camera. Um, so same imports like always camera, camera result type, camera source. And then we can put a little image on our page just like this. And it would be really cool if the annotation might work here. I don't know uh, what I messed up. Like I only got prettier at this moment. So I'm not sure what's not acting correctly. Um, but anyway, so uh, we could add a little if here to our card. Uh, where in the card is usually a good place for, I think here's a good place for the image. So a bit of swelled if we do have an image. So if my image is set, we're going to render an image. Source will be my image my image and then we're good to see. and then we can close our if statement what's your problem uh, most likely we need an alt tag right alt cool cool image <laughs> uh screen readers already announced elements as an image okay and what's the fix to this <laughs> what's the quick fix 
I ignore <laughs> what? Uh, I don't actually know what's your problem. Now it should have an alt attribute. Come on, this is ridiculous. <laughs> whatever, do whatever you want, VS Code. I don't care. This is now my image, my cool card. Uh, I'm gonna add a button now. I on button. Uh, we're gonna do. Let's do something else. Let's do expand block and fill outline just to try everything possible. Um, capture image. And then we're gonna see on click, we're gonna call our function, what's it called? Take picture. Take picture. Okay, uh, I actually don't know why this is not reloading. Yeah, probably because I killed the live reload. That makes sense, Simon. That totally makes sense. Oh, somebody just tipped $20. Wow, this is amazing, David. Thank you so much. Uh, I'm certainly gonna use that wisely tomorrow when I go to the uh, to a park with my daughter. She's gonna have a lot of fun with that money. I can swear. Definitely, it's gonna buy a lot of chocolate. <laughs> no, probably something healthy. Uh, okay, this could, should hopefully call our function to capture an image. Uh, which should bring up the uh, prompt. We should get back a base64 image. We set it and well, let's see. Uh, gonna use a photo from photos, uh, something like this. There we go. Uh, okay, I think Matthias is actually the expert. I should have bring in an expert uh, to this chat. Uh, Swell has a11i warnings built in it's just the image text in alt so what should i actually do like do i need to do something like should i do it like this did you mean it like this oh you meant it like this you probably meant it like this <laughs> that's cool uh so thanks again cool to see you expanding out to different frameworks please don't forget about us angular devs really enjoying you on the all the code podcast sorry to hear about your car david uh yeah um many things in this yeah our car got stolen i think two weeks ago but we do have a new leasing car so it was really just stolen in front of our door on uh, night to sunday um shit happens uh but we got a new car um the all the code podcast is definitely something all the code that you should check out if you haven't done it before uh this is the all the code podcast i'm gonna link it here in the chat as well um every week we are now dropping even two episodes so on tuesday we talk about business tool uh, related things like simon and i are both full-time online creator influencer whatever you want to call it and on fridays we talk about uh, a lot of interesting things like Web3, front end, back end, frameworks. Like the last episodes have been really a blast and got a lot of clicks. So Simon's front end nightmares is actually this is a pretty great episode about uh, all this uh, madness around. This is exactly the image that I had in here. Uh, let me quickly take this again uh, from photos. Where was it? About the front end madness here. Uh, can we just go, uh, I need to zoom in here, right? Yeah, about all these files, ESLint, ignore, pretty R, package, post CSS, well, tailwind config, TS config, vid config, <laughs> uh, all these crazy things, uh, things that are going on in the front end world. So yeah, check out the All The Code podcast. And once again, thank you, uh, David. And yes, I do have uh, quite a bit of Angular content in the pipeline as well, especially there's coming a big, a really massively big Angular guide about using Superbase in uh, probably, I think in August or so. Um, so I bet you will definitely love that. Um, this is gonna be a pretty great example of using Angular and Superbase. Now, let me quickly check uh, what's been going on with the chat as well again close to 30 people i'm really happy for all of you tuning in we do this mm, the last well the last thursdays and i plan to do this the next thursdays as well uh not sure about next week's topic because we kind of touched all the frameworks at this point um but yeah there will be something interesting next uh, thursday so definitely tune in 
Uh, okay, what do we have as well? Uh, Gail, let's spawn some more Simonix. <laughs> yeah, I, I won't spawn more Simonix. I already have one little Simonix here at home. That's enough. But you are very welcome to spawn more Simonix into the world. A uh, German message. Uh, yeah, uh, with uh, Firebase 9, there were a lot of changes. But as far as I know, I do... I do, I do, I do have a video on that, don't I? Um, I think I have something on using Firebase. Uh, just look up in my videos. There should be something about using Firebase in the latest version. I think actually two videos about this. Uh, yes, you can ask a question. If Max is still in here, <laughs> once again, hey Max. Um, should I switch to Svelte instead of Angular? You don't have to. Uh, what's the name? HTC? Well, probably not a real name. Um, it's just a different way to approach all of this. And I like a lot of things about Svelte and Svelte Cured. Um, I always said I don't like the single file approach, especially with Vue. However, I kind of now got used to it with Svelte. And I can see the simplicity of just importing components. Um, um, using the file-based routing now with Routify or Svelte Kit and things are pretty easy with Svelte and it just compiles to plain vanilla JavaScript. So it's different from Angular and React as there's no virtual DOM or not all the bloat that's sent to the browser of people. So this is what they mean with uh, cybernetically enhanced applications as far as I know. Um, so I think it is a great way. I don't think you have to completely switch, but I would just give it a try because it's pretty easy to get started. As an Angular developer, you will feel like a burden is taken off your shoulders as you don't have all the, the module consideration, the components, uh, the routing, uh, all those hundred little files that we, we got in Angular applications. Like there's a lot taken away and you can build very, very fast uh, applications. Now, uh, the Ionic Academy badge is blocking the header of your Svelte app. That's definitely not a good idea. <laughs> Thanks, Mohamed. Uh, I'll take it out. Uh, it should just show up uh, every now and then. So if you don't know this, of course, I'm running the Ionic Academy, uh, but I'm pretty sure everyone in here already knows this. HGS Indonesia, because of you, now I love Angular Ionic Capacitor. That is great. And thanks for following Sahil. Um, uh, I really like to just spread some love for Ionic and Capacitor, um, especially Capacitor. It's going to be the main focus for the next time, uh, since with Capacitor, we can use pretty much whatever we want and become a mobile developer as a web developer. And that's uh, just what I want to show you with all the streams and videos that I'm right now doing. Um, There's so many people on this world who have web development skills. And I'm pretty sure that most of them could develop native applications and they have a native application in them that they always wanted to do or perhaps they want to expand their CV to also say, hey, I'm also a native developer. And um, I think over the next years, this will be possible and I will hopefully be a key part in showing and helping people to get to that level. Um, so if you got anyone who wants to get into mobile who's just a web developer, please recommend this channel, recommend me. Uh, I'm now trying to help all the web developers to get into mobile applications. Actually, uh, just yesterday I created a new trailer video for the channel. So if you haven't checked this out, you should definitely do this. It's not like it's adding any, any value to uh, something, but you should definitely check it out because it's cool. Um, and I put actually some time into creating it. Oh, come on. How can I now see this video? I'm not even able to see my own videos that I created because I put it to unlisted. Uh, I'm a really, I'm, I'm sometimes a genius when it comes to these things. I, I, forget, I can do the most complex things and then I forget about the, the easiest stuff. Like, where is this? Oh, there are coming a lot of cool videos over the next time. You, I bet you're gonna enjoy them. Um, can I give you a sneak peek? Yeah, actually I can, maybe I can do this. Um, just a quick spoiler. I'm um, just going to put it in here. <laughs> the new trailer, you can give it a thumbs up because it's a cool video. I think I really put some time into this. Um, uh, 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 uh. So thanks again, Matthias, for the explanation. 
Ray is enjoying React and Vue. That's cool. Not just Dev. <laughs> nice. Uh, finally see you live. Yeah, happy to see you in here. So uh, Vadim is also like the expert in uh, live streams. He has like five hour live streams. And I'm already sweating here after one hour. Uh, so he's doing great jobs. Check out his channel, not just Dev as well. Uh, amazing stuff he's doing with, I think, uh, a lot of React Native. So if you want to check out React Native, I probably will do this in the future as well. But at this point, Vadim is definitely <laughs> a lot more expert on that. Um, besides that, what was I? Uh, okay, yeah, I know. Now I know what I want to show you. So for people in here, I want to give you a little sneak peek at what's coming up next week. Um, so... Uh, let me check. Let me go back to the main screen and I'm going to show you what will come. Okay, this preview is pretty horrible, but this will be an Angular video. Angular landing page with Airtable integration and Netlify functions. So what we're going to do is we're going to create cloud functions to hide our uh, secret key information. We're going to work with Netlify and implement a cloud function and in the end access our uh, Airtable database in a secure way. So this is what's coming next week. Don't say I don't create any Angular content anymore. That's not the truth. I do, I do, I do. And I will continue to do Angular, but I'm also gonna mix in uh, React content and uh, Svelte content as we've seen. Now, in terms of our application, um, I think we're pretty finished. So you can trust me that I could now easily deploy this uh, with capacitor to a device. Uh, the only thing I would have to do at this point is checking out how I do a build, which is a Vite build, npm run build, uh, which should hopefully create some kind of dist folder. Yep, dist client. So that means within my capacitor config, which I don't really have, npx cap init uh, let's do this my app com dev tactic dot swelt uh, and i want to use the dist slash client directory so that should set up our config right here mm -hmm. that looks good so we got the run let's run um npx cap at iOS to add the iOS platform to our project that should already take the output from the web directory from dist client um, and then npx cap open iOS which brings up Xcode then we can deploy this fun to our device uh, before we do this we should probably apply a little change in our info p list as always um, because we need the capacitor camera. Uh, I always forget how the string NS camera usage. Okay, so let's add the key. NS camera usage key string to capture images. And then we're gonna add two more. Uh, now it's no steering, it's a string. <laughs> Two more for the NS photo library at usage description and NS photo library usage description. And if I'm lucky, I'm gonna deploy this to my iPhone and I'll be able to use the same application just like we did. Um, did you think Cordova still have a place on hybrid development? Oh, that is actually a very good question, Leandro. Um, hmm. Mm, yeah, but I think it has more a place in terms of like uh, maintaining things. I think at this point, Cordova is mostly community maintained, if that's true. Um, so I don't think there will be any big future changes. And I actually don't see a reason why I should use for any new project uh, Cordova over Capacitor because with Capacitor I get the benefits of Capacitor and I can still use 99% of Cordova plugins. So there's really for me at this point just yeah just no reason to use Cordova. And I think every everyone starting 
a hybrid application should use Capacitor instead of Cordova. So there is a place in so far as we still need like all the old stuff from um, from Cordova because we will lie still on a lot of Cordova plugins, but yeah. Uh, I think it's just just be maintained. Okay, so what we see here, the application works on my iOS simulator device. The only problem is with the header. I'm pretty sure that this once again comes down to the head tag uh, or maybe even the settings we had in here. Um, no, this is actually not used anymore. So we could fix this probably by using the environment and the safe area top uh, to make this work. I'm not gonna do this right now because I was interested in this and this works. I'm, I'm always still after like years of using this. I still enjoy this so much. Like we have one line, await camera get photo and it just triggers this native iOS stuff uh, on the web, it triggers this overlay that we've seen before, and on Android, it will trigger a different action sheet. And I just, just like this so, so much. So let me try this. Um, yeah, I'm gonna give access to all the images. I'm gonna select one, and that should be a pretty like. All the images in the simulator are usually pretty big. Uh, we actually got a problem here because there's no such file. <laughs> Didn't I just select that file? <laughs> like. <laughs> What is this error? <laughs> okay, okay. anyway, we were able to use it. So that means we have done, once again, we've done it. One hour, Swelter, Ionic, Capacitor, and also Veed. And I think that was a pretty nice stream. Um, I really enjoyed that we could do this in one hour. I wasn't sure if we could fit everything in, uh, but I really hope this gave you a first impression of using Swelt. I like it. It doesn't mean I will abandon Angular. I also won't abandon Next or React, but I think it's a good idea to add Swelt to your tool belt, to your radar, because there's a lot going on in the Swelt world. The numbers, the installation numbers and the likes for Swelt are continuously rising. It was on the satisfaction rating of the developer stack overflow at the very top. Um, Jeff Delaney from Fireship recently said in a video that if he had to rebuild his stack, he would actually also use SwellKit for something new. And I consider Jeff to be a real expert on the topic. Also, Scott Tolinsky from um, from the Syntax podcast, from Level Up Tutorials, is doing a lot of uh, stuff on Swelt. So. As I said, a lot of experts having an eye on Swelt. James Quick uh, has done it. And I just think it really feels good. Give it a try. It's pretty easy to get started. And as an Angular developer, you should have no problem to get into Swelt. Just do a little tutorial and you will be pretty much sold, especially if you're using SwellKit with server-side rendering and SEO. I bet you're gonna love it. And as we've seen, you can still use Swelt with Ionic. There are just some open issues, but I hope in the future we're gonna see a real integration between Ionic UI components and Swelt. So that was so far my talk for today. <laughs> um, so quickly checking out the chat, Tony, you were the person who convinced me to start our next company project now current with Capacitor and move away from Cordova. I hope that it was a good decision, Tony. Uh, but I would bet 99% like I'm pretty sure it was a good decision and you will, you would thank me. Uh, Matthias, thanks so much for the stream. Very good to get an overview of how this all could be connected. I'm uh, really happy. Once again, I'm going to put in the great application from Tomatom Tom into the chat as well. Um, there are easy applications that you can just get uh, for testing, like the blank and the list, to see how everything works. Uh, so kudos to Tomatom Tom once again. Um, Ray, is there anything that Capacitor can't do? Yes, there are certain Cordova plugins which won't work directly with Capacitor, mostly because they rely on some kind of strange configuration or automation going on. But since you can with Capacitor still set like variables uh, in the native projects or directly work on the native projects, there's actually no problem um, to find a way around this. So I haven't found something that's not working with Capacitor that did work before with Cordova, or at least it works on a better way now. Uh, yeah, happy you also enjoyed the Lottie quick win. 
Uh, next week, as, uh, again, the Angular uh, landing page, that's gonna be a massive tutorial. And also there's an Angular super base tutorial coming up in the near future. Uh, have you used Stencil at a large scale before? Last question from David. Um, no, not at large scale, uh, only in, in smaller projects and for testing it. Um, but I know a lot of bigger companies actually using Stencil to create their internal design uh, system. So uh, using Stencil is definitely a good idea. You're gonna find a lot of great resources. I think this year or last year on the Ionic Conf, there was a talk by VW uh, about how a specific team has built a design system using Stencil. Uh, you should definitely check this out. You should find it somewhere on the uh, Ionic YouTube channel. So if you enjoyed this video, uh, make sure you hit the like button and also the subscribe if you're not yet subscribed. And I will hopefully be back like next Thursday. I don't know what we're going to talk about, but I will most likely be there. Maybe we're just going to have a little chat and just build something cool. So if you got any ideas or things that you would like to see in the stream that you would like me to talk about in that stream, please just tweet me something on Twitter. Uh, I'm just going to quickly put in my profile because the name, I still don't know why I picked that name. Um, you can find me here on Twitter. You can find me in the Ionic Academy. And otherwise, I hope you will have a great rest Thursday or Friday and then a great weekend. And I'm going to catch you in our next stream. So as always, until then.